Guten Tag and welcome to another episode of the Godfather oh, the Minute. minute. <laughs> <laughs> We should do the whole episode with these outrageous accents. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I wear the Lederhosen. My name is Alex Robinson. And my name is Andy Robinson. And together we are the Godfather, Godfather minute, minute Brothers here to talk about Minute 8. Alex, a minuto. A minuto. Numero. Numero. Otto. Otto. Atu. Yeah, I think that's it. Atu. Atu. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Atu. Atu. You got it. You ought to learn Italian. <laughs> um, What's minute, this minute about? Minute huh? eight. Uh, the ever silent Vito Andolini is uh, smuggled out of Corleone, and we find him on a ship heading into New York Harbor, greeted by a strange yeah. green woman wearing a toga. The unwashed masses huddle on the deck of the ship. Is it fear on their faces or something more American? <laughs> nice. Thank you. Awesome. I love it. Do you I think... Love it. Uh, I know uh, last week we talked a lot about the Donkey family. Yeah. That, Do you well, that think hat. he ever... <laughs> did that. he buy a hat like that while he was in Italy? Hopefully he can... Or do you think he was counting on the fact that he could buy one? Vito? Yeah. Hmm... No, the question was going to be, did he ever <laughs> thank or repay the family that helped smuggle him out? Mm. Well, I think if he were in... We know we were Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yes, I think he does. You know, that would have been a nice little side story when he... When the... Um, the, the Robert De Niro version yeah, of Don right. Corleone goes back to Sicily. Yeah. And the donkey's all old. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you the donkey know has a big, long beard. <laughs> you know, I think he does go back. That was the guy who he thought was Don Ciccio. Well, like that was the family? That, that was he... actual the guy of the family. He ends up cutting open his belly. He thinks accident. He, he mistakes him for Don Ciccio, but that's oh. really the guy that helped smuggle him out. He oh wasn't wearing my gosh, he wasn't wearing his hat. He couldn't believe tell it or not. <laughs> 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 he wound up killing the very man who smuggled him out of Sicily years ago. Wow, <laughs> that would That'd be horrible. That's a really like, oh Henry ish twist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those old Henry twists are always bad, right? I guess so. All right, there was. Unfortunate for both parties. That would be well, like. Was a, there, is there only one O. Henry story? No, he wrote a lot of different short stories. And did they all have that same kind of twist? I don't think. That, I don't think they oh. all did. It was just that he was basically like the Twilight Zone of his like <laughs> so ironic <laughs> thing would happen. I don't think they were all like. Yeah. Oh, you know, I don't think it was always yeah. like a turn to last page and find out what the answer was yeah. of how they were going to get screwed or something. But it's that. a mafia chieftain's estate, in a <laughs> small town in, in a no t- no name town in Sicily. The man. Who's that supposed to be? Oh, is Rod that, Serling. Oh, that's Rod Serling. <laughs> <laughs> we lived in Binghamton, New York. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do your Rod Serling. I couldn't couldn't place it. Submitted for your submitted for your approval. Meet meet Vito Corleone. That sounds too much like a, he's a uh, little more uh, cool. Is meet like, Vito Corleone. It's <laughs> like turning to like a, 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 a Howard Cosell. Yeah, he's a uh, no a no name mafia chieftain in Sicily. He's a low level a low, a low level mafia. Hmm, I can't do it. <laughs> it's hard. It is hard. Yeah. Um. Huh. Anyway. Anyway. Minute eight. Minute eight. So, Vito Corleone and the family. So now we see him uh, on the ship to America. Yes. He's on a, a boat, big boat, with a bunch ship. of other folks. A ship. Not a boat. A ship. Ship. Well, uh, if you've never taken a cruise, right? No. I've been on ships, but I've never... Not a, in a cruise fashion. Oh, when you went to when you went to Ecuador, weren't you? Yeah, on, you, is were that you, a cruise? It's a kind of it's a much smaller boat. Well, the only I only bring it up because I've been on two different like big cruises, and mm-hmm. every time I would say boat to one of the employees, oh, can you tell me which end of the boat the barber shop's on? They'd be like, it's a ship, not Whoa. a boat. And I wow. forget what the difference is between a ship and a boat. 
I'm more interested in the fact that they corrected you every time. Was that in their contract? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's just like, um, yeah, I don't know if it was just them being, They. I don't think they were like being jerks about it, but they were, you know, it, it became a running joke where whenever anyone would uh-huh. say, oh, let's get back on the boat, we'd say ship, you know, like, oh, like yeah. correcting people say ship. So. Sir, the boat is what you get in when the ship is sinking. You Maybe see that little, 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 little like yellow that. light boat over there? That's the boat, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so what were you saying yeah. about the ship? I just think it's cool. It's just, the ship, you, don't even, you don't really see the exterior shot of the ship they're on, but you see other ships as they're pulling it to New York Harbor. Well, you do see their ship from far away. Oh, they show it? Yeah, it's the Mushalu. Is that their ship? Yeah, that's the, you see, oh, it, you see okay. them um, on the boat. Uh, and I looked it up, the Mushu. Good, I knew you would, because I had a comment about it, but I knew you were going to look was it your, up. What was your... No, 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 go. Oh. I didn't do any research. Oh. I had a question. Uh, well, the only thing I... There, it was a real ship called the Mushalu, um, and uh, weirdly, it uh, launched in 1904. So, three mm. years after... <gasps> after Vito you know, Andolini allegedly sailed on it. Believe it or oh, not. <laughs> that boat and ship would not be built for three years. Yeah. The ship sailed before it was built. <laughs> yeah, Believe so, it or not. Uh, you can see it. You so can it's a cur- ghost ship, you're saying. It's a, it's a ghost ship. <laughs> um, you can see the ship. It's currently docked in Philadelphia, where it is now a restaurant. What? The real Mushalu ship. Whoa. That, whoa, whoa, whoa. The real... So, wait a minute. The ship in the movie is the real Mushalu ship? There is a real ship called the Mushalu, mm-hmm. which is currently docked in Philadelphia from around that time period. It was mm. built in 1904. It's docked in Philadelphia. There's a restaurant on board now. Wow. Why they use that one to be this, I cannot say. That's a hundred year old ship. Yeah. And wow. um, interestingly, the real Mushalu is a uh, sail, has sails on mm-hmm. it. But um, I was under the impression that most uh, immigrant ships were like steamships. Gosh, I don't even know. So, and when I just did a quick Google of Ellis Island ships, most of the ships I saw were steamships. So, oh. uh, I wonder if. Uh, well, you do see in in this minute, you do right. see at least one other ship with sails. Right. Yeah, like a smaller one. Yeah, yeah like a smaller one. So, uh, but so I just wondered if because the Mushalu was definitely a sail ship, yeah. not a not a maybe that's the difference between a ship and a boat. Probably not. Uh, maybe. Um, anyway, there you Interesting. go. Interesting. Next up on our trip, for on our Godfather oh, trip, yeah. we're going to have to start in Philly, and we're going to have to go to the Mushaloo mm-hmm. and eat where Vito first. Uh, yeah. Little, they, they've been cleaning the smallpox everywhere on that boat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they got great mule sandwiches. How are the mule sandwiches on this Italian boat? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, what's good in this restaurant? Get the mule. It's the best in the city. All right. I'll have that. <laughs> hey, waiter. Give <laughs> me a piece of ass. <laughs> I had to go there. Didn't I? <laughs> so in the Bronx, New York, yes, there and I drove this a million times when I was living there. There's a Moshalu. We call it Moshalu Parkway. Mm-hmm. It's spelled the yeah. same, but it was M O S H. Yeah. Is that related? Who is this person? I, you know what? I don't have that. I did not oh, get that okay. information. So sorry. Oh. I, I can look it up though. Oh, we'll right. ask. ask we'll we'll answer. answer. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, I, I never it was just an odd name. I, I assumed it was someone from old New York history. I, th- uh, you know what? You gotta write it down. Yeah, I'll write it down. Yeah, write it down. Yeah. Um, well, what else you got about this minute? Is- well, we see the Statue of Liberty. Yes. Iconic land, New York landmark, American mm-hmm. landmark. Yeah. Oh yeah. World landmark. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever been? E- yes. We both lived in New York for a time. Yes, I had to think about it. Probably about 20 years ago, I think I went... School uh, thing? No, just went with a friend, went to Ellis Island, and uh, just kind of walked around. Hmm. Didn't go up into the statue. I don't think you could at that time. It was under under construction. Yeah. Or, or terrorism. Yeah, maybe. When? Yeah, I guess 20 yeah. years ago. 20 I don't years think ago. I, had ever, I don't think I had ever been there. Yeah. I don't remember being there on a school trip or anything, but then an out-of-town friend came. It was one of those things that you're like, oh, all right, let's do it, because yeah. I never do it anyway. Yeah, How about you? Did you ever No, I never I never went. Yeah. Um, a, uh, I was suspiciously sounded like uh, Fredo denying he knew Johnny Ola. <laughs> no, no, I never, I never met her. 
<laughs> and you're like, oh, me and, me and uh, Johnny used to come to this gift shop all the time. You get little little knickknacks of the Statue of Liberty. It's great. <laughs> Old Man Ruff would, would never come down to these uh, iconic landmarks. <laughs> he couldn't stay in a huddle mass his journey to be free. <laughs> you see this big green statue? They call her Super Lady. <laughs> you don't want to see what's under that robe. <laughs> um... <laughs> Anything else about the Statue of Liberty? Well, it uh, opened... From France, I know that. It, it, uh, yes, it, it was a gift from France mm-hmm. you know, in honor of the um, 100th anniversary of the um, uh, American Revolution, which, mm-hmm. of course, sparked the French to, to kill their own king. Yeah. Uh, 1886, so it's only 15 years old when uh, Vito was wow. seeing it here, which is kind of an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, like, really Something cool. that, like, to us, it's been there forever, but... Yeah, like to think that oh, that wasn't there for a while. It was, um, it's, it's so the Statue of Liberty is such a a weird symbol because on one level it seems very corny. Yeah, like it just seems so kind of like cheesy in a way. But like reading accounts of immigrants who saw the statue, literally, like we see, like like a, we're very moved by it, seeing it, and like oh my gosh, we made it, and so you know. In that I'm gonna sense, pr- I'm going to press back on that. I don't think it's cheesy. You don't think it's cheesy? I think cheesy. it's fan- beautiful and mm. fantastic. Right. Why Why is it cheesy? Well, I guess... Is it just played out, overplayed? Well, and it's so... like Yeah, I guess patriotism in general is such a like mm. easy way to kind of like try to sway people. And the, like, I, I feel like that's mostly what we see the Statue of Liberty in like, you know, insurance oh, commercials yeah. and like that yeah. kind of, yeah, you know... I, I didn't think of it as, as, I guess it is patriotism or it comes into play. Then I thought of it as as a, a symbol for a better life for people. Right. Which is kind of anti-patriotic because <laughs> <laughs> people don't, like, people that are patriots tend to at least well, yeah, promote themselves as patriots. I guess that's the other weird thing about it is that we have such a, a, a uneasy relationship with our own immigration policy that yeah. it's, it's like a... It almost seems vaguely hypocritical to say, like, oh, the Statue of Liberty is such a symbol of America. Just keep those immigrants out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's get that in those immigrants out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you and you get the hell out of here and you get the hell out of here and you get the... <laughs> so, so I guess as a symbol, there's a lot of really mixed yeah. stuff in it. So, yeah. um, you know. Uh, and then plus, it, plus throw in it's a gift from France, which has its own a whole other yeah. angle to it. So. It's so... It's so striking Mm -hmm. in the New York landscape. Yes. It's just, you see all these skyscrapers and they're big and they're glass and shiny and bright. It's crazy. And and these these waterways, you get the harbors, the Hudson River, East River. And there's this this cool looking statue of a person that's huge, but it's still not as big as the skyscrapers. Right, and it's green, so it stands out. It's just—it's very striking whenever I yeah. see it. You're flying or kicking around in New York. Well, you know, it was originally it's made of copper. Yeah, right. Not, not you, copper. Uh, <laughs> it um, and originally it was so it was like brown, like yeah. a penny when it was first, and then it turned green over time yeah. as it oxidized. And I guess originally there was a plan where they're like, "Well, we're going to paint it. We're going to paint it brown, so it doesn't." And and people were like, no, we like it green. We like it. It looks better green. <laughs> so they said they they only painted the inside and they kept the outside. And apparently, it protects it better by having that that oxidation on it. So oh, it, cool. it serves a. But it is weird to think of it as brown. Like to think yeah. that originally was it was a totally different color. Yeah. I wonder if they. Um, I wonder if Coppola's team researched at what stage of its oxidation it was at. Yeah. Because that would have been interesting. This thing to see it like partially like brown like oh, uh, man. You know, yeah. so is it true to history i don't know I historically look. accurate I, I didn't look to see what to, wow. what it was at, at that time but i don't um, think in the 70s would they have had the um early 70s the technology to color it no well i mean they could just use like a model or something you know like yeah. a, and just, superimpose that on yeah, the real footage like, yeah, of the new or, york sky yeah. so they do have the tech they did have the technology to do that i mean that's like that's like that's a pretty simple Oh. You know, just get a, just get by a, a fake Statue of Liberty, do it brown, and, and angle it in such a way where it oh, looks like so it's just there, physically but, put it in front of the camera, yeah, covering or, or, up or the or real matte painting or whatever. You yeah. know, I mean, there's definitely tricks to do. Yeah. They wouldn't have to, uh, but um, yeah, that would be an interesting. Uh, like I was, I think I mentioned I was working on that um, 
series of comic books from classic mm-hmm. history. Yeah, they're very uh, cool. Things. So I wanted to so I wanted about George Washington, and I had a British flag hanging in the background, but I wanted to look up what did the British flag look like mm. in 1776, and it was slightly different than ah. it was, doesn't didn't have the extra. A red cross in it that it does today. Oh, so, cool. so I was proud of myself that I that I looked it up and and uh, so some yeah. some history nerd will be like, no, that's not the right. Oh, it yeah. is the correct flag. Yeah. Well, it, was, it was changed yeah. in 1789. Anyway, yeah, I give you credit for doing that. Unfortunately, you missed the the one that was the one that you got to get right. You forgot to give him wooden teeth. Oh, that's right. I had him wearing a watch. That I forgot <laughs> to tell him to take off his watch before. It, before Did George Washington have wooden teeth? They were partially made out of wood. Okay. And hippopotamus ivory. Oh, wow. Yeah. My gosh. Nothing makes you appreciate living in the 21st century as learning about uh, dentistry in olden times. Oh, boy. You totally take it for granted. Ugh. There's so many physical ailments that we are kind of immune, that we kind of don't have to deal with, but that people in olden times constantly did. Oh, yeah. So. Anyway, but people will probably look back on this era and say, "Oh my gosh, they oh yeah barbarians. lost their teeth when they were older, and they had to brush them, yeah. and floss them, and go to these these people known as dentists." <laughs> <laughs> See, and you know, dentists. I got a beef to pick with dentists. Well, go, what? Why do teeth get their own special doctor? Oh, like why? Why does? Why is a dentist a like? Where is the line between? Where a dentist takes over and when a doctor takes over. Why? I think it's, What's the deal with that? I think it's the gum line, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. Like every other body part, you're, you're a doctor and you're part of the main doctor category. But dentists yeah. are their own little, like, thing. Yeah, and it's a whole separate school. You go to dentist. Yeah. I'm guessing they started as people that just that just like, pulled out teeth. Yeah. Yanked them out. Yeah. But then... Maybe it evolved into a specialty because people started thinking, well, we got to, it's all about prevention. And there's a lot of activity in the mouth. Oh, so we need someone That makes sense. That. I could see, that, like, originally, like, barbers were also dentists. Yes. And they yeah. just kind of, like, once doctors took over, they were, like, still like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now we're doctors. Like, we don't want anything to do with teeth. That's, yes. That's, that's like, a low class thing. Mm-hmm. Or were dentists, like, hey, Stay out of our business. We got the teeth part covered. I, who who was the who was the refu who was the one who initiated <laughs> yeah. the separation? Or I think it's the former. I think the doctors didn't the want doctors any, were snobs. Any, yeah, they didn't because that's what we see today. I think there's more prestige being a a doctor. I don't know yeah. even say it. A real doctor, <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to a dentist who is a doctor. But yeah, yeah I think the doctors were snobs. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe. Um, hmm. But yeah. Although you would think that dentists would get more work because there was more. There was much, there's so much more activity in the mouth that everybody would need a dentist, whereas not everyone would need a surgeon. Maybe that's why they were more. Yeah, it was a more. It was a more elite thing. Specialty. Yeah. Yeah. Because probably if you're a dentist, there was probably dentists all up and down the class spectrum. There were yeah. people, low class dentists who just like yeah. come on in and sit in the chair, you know, they rip it out. Yeah, and yeah. There'd be high class ones who'd say, "My little, my lord, sit in the chair," and then yeah. they rip it out. <laughs> yeah, high class. <laughs> That's the thing. Also, doctors in olden times, there wasn't really much they could do. Like, I know. Yeah, nothing. Like, what could they do? Nothing. Ble- they bleed you. Yeah, leeches. They put their their leech uh, collection all over you. I read a biography of President uh, Andrew Garfield. Okay, what what year was he president? Uh, it was post Civil War, pre nineteen hundred. So, okay. that, oh, that's the worst era. That was the, the a lot of those bearded presidents in the yeah, middle. There, that is the worst era to be president and for dentistry too. Garfield was shot. Mm-hmm. And most uh, experts say now he would probably easily have survived that shot. Mm-hmm. Even if the doctors had done nothing, he probably would have survived. Whoa. But what messed him up was like the doctors were like, well, we got to get like they kept like probing inside the oh. hole. And this is before anyone really understood germs. And so like oh. the doctor gets off his horse, walks into the thing. Let me see the guy <laughs> sticks his horsey hands oh. inside the thing. And that's ultimately what killed, you know, oh. it just got infected from everyone poking around in it oh so uh, so so for all the foibles today be glad you know antibiotics oh, yeah. didn't exist mm-hmm. an- anesthesia didn't exist yeah uh tongue depressors all tongue depressors actually probably did exist yeah 
Well, it was the doctor's hand, horse, his horsey <laughs> hand. <laughs> He's like, they went, they, went, they, <laughs> they stored the tongue depressors out in the outhouse. They go, let me go oh, get the tongue depressors. They bring it in. They go, here we go. We go. Ah, oh, they were used to. I don't know why you keep getting sick, but say ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those tongue depressors were used to to scrape the uh, the dry chunks off the inside <laughs> of the outhouse. <laughs> that would not surprise me in the least. <laughs> That's how Garfield died, right? <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Uh, now you Get said that tongue depressor out of your ass. <laughs> well, do we want to do a so uh, any comments of Vito on the ship as a as a wayward youth traveling by himself? Well, it looks pretty exciting. He's there, and it's a new life. I mean, he must be terrified though. It's so. He, it's he just also so any... funny now that we're so um, uh, so hyper like vigilant about children being kept mm-hmm. safe. No, oh, this kid just goes to f- by himself. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's a ship. Do you think there's anyone does when he on the boat? Is he like someone's there waiting for me, or does he just get off the boat and be like, "All right, now I." Uh. <laughs> he gets to New York and Don Chicho's there. I'm here to pick you up. <laughs> it's like Don Chicho's brother. Oh. It's like, hey, I'm Phil Chicho. Uh, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't don't worry about. It. I'm not gonna turn you into my brother. I could use a guy like you. Here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a good what if. What if he oh. went there and became like Don Chicho's uh, rival? This is almost turning into like the Last Don. Was there a plot in the Last Don about that? Was, yeah, about like some yeah. the son of some other guy was yeah. became. <laughs> well, maybe the guy picking him up at the at the port. Uh-huh. Maybe that was Joey Zaza's, Zaza's grandfather, grandfather. Grandpa Zaza. Grandpa Zaza. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Yes, it is true. I like the <laughs> limelight, and you can call me Papa Zaza. Sure, I like to pick up some boys down at the pier every <laughs> now and then. What's the American way? <laughs> no, no, Uncle Uncle Michael Zaza. He he, he has kids working for him. <laughs> um, what else you got? <laughs> Very good. Very aggro. What else you got? What else you got? I do have some. What else you got? I do have some. We asked, we answered. Oh, let's hear what you got. So, if you recall from a few minutes ago, we had the question, which was what? This is several minutes ago, maybe minute two. Yes. What do you call in Sicilian or Italy? What do you call? Is there a term for people who enjoy bringing, telling bad news? Yes. Because if you recall, uh, Mama Andolini's neighbor breaks it to her that her son, is, her other son, is dead, and I read something into her tone that had a sort of almost like gleeful, like uh, yeah, pleasure in it. That's right. And so we reached out to our two, our two, um, I was going to say professionals, but uh, experts. So first, Antonino Consiglio, uh, we asked him, and he says. My mother says Sicilian. My mother's quote. <laughs> Puzo writes. My mother says Sicilians love to amplify other people's misfortune. Mm, there Exclamation you go. point. She said it's the inherent jealousy and vengefulness that's in our blood that sometimes brings it out. That's effed up. Coincidentally, my mother laughed when she told me this. <laughs> I like mm. that he specifically asked her for this show. Like, it wasn't just something he knew. Like, he said to say to his mom. Yeah, he didn't know. He yeah. said he had to take uh, yeah. steps to ask her. So she doesn't, uh, but, the, but she no doesn't, he doesn't say what the term No, is. He doesn't say, so, oh, she no, term. Oh, no term. No term yet. No term. No term. <laughs> no term. And so our other uh, specialists, our Latin scholar, Peter Carucci in New York, reached out to him with this question, and this is what he had to say. Hmm. Hey guys, glad to be back. Thanks for having me. How you been in these crazy times? Good. How about you? Oh, I see. Pretty, pretty good. Oh, that's good. Me? I've been doing okay. I've just begun drafting a new translation of Dante's Divine Comedy from the original medieval Italian. I love comedy. And as you guys know, medieval Latin and Italian is my specialty and I absolutely love it. Well, let's get right down to the nuts and bolts, shall we? All roads do lead to Rome. You want to know if there's a term in Italian or Sicilian for someone that takes pleasure in sharing bad news and they like the attention. I don't know of a term per se, but what I will tell you 
is a term that is used often in New York Italian, which Italian Americans around the country, around the world probably know. Many New York City Italian American terms come into being and people don't even know whether they're English or Italian. For example, the expression agita. Oh, this is giving me agita. People in the New York City area in particular of every walk of life, understand that to mean that it bothers you, which really means it gives you stomach discomfort. In the same way, there's a wonderful term, which in my particular family, we used all the time to describe a person who does take pleasure in bothering and annoying and prying into someone else's weak spots. Slightly different from sharing bad news, but prying into someone else and enjoying it. The term is a scutchamend. You might have heard the term scutch. In the New York area, people are definitely familiar with that term. Oh, he's such a scutch, which means he bothers someone and enjoys it to the point of, of, of reveling in it. The real term in Italian is scocciatore, someone who bothers. But in the American Italian dialects that all combined in New York City and in other metropolitan areas, Neapolitan, Calabrese, Sicilian, Bares, even dialects from the north like Romanaccia, things like that. The term scocciamend became used very often. So perhaps the best answer I can give you to your query is scocciamend. Which, guys, if you've been in my home, you've most likely heard my grandfather, my uncle's, Call my father that. Hey, thanks for having me. Enjoy the rest of the show. All right. So, what do you uh, think, Alex? Not quite. We're we're getting closer, but uh, the the, 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 the the there seems to be a consensus that the um, attitude does exist, but there doesn't mm. seem to be a term for specifically someone who enjoys giving bad news. Yeah. So uh, let's open the floor up. If anyone, if you're from a different culture other than America or, or English speaking, give us a call. Send us an email, godfatherminute uh, at gmail.com or, or hit us up on Twitter at Godfather Minute. Let us know if your uh, country has a term for that. Yes, we would love to know. There's got to be some gotta. some language out there that's got that term. Yeah. But let's switch them in. Scutamen. I like it. That seems more like a nudge, like an anno- like yeah. someone who's like annoying yeah. purposely. It's yeah. not scutch. quite the same, but uh, don't yeah. be a scutch. Yeah, scutch. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> who's a, who's a, who's the scutch scutchamen in GF in the GF world? Uh, hmm. Polly. No, because he didn't really want. I mean, he was, if anything, I was going to say yeah. Clemenza is more has that seems to. Oh yeah, making right. fun of Michael. But, yeah. Oh, they do like you love when he's <laughs> throwing sandwiches at Polly and uh, stuff. But he's not just annoying, so it's yeah. He's not quite this. He's not quite as uh, yeah. Maybe it's not like biting. Carlo or something. <laughs> yeah, that's <is> true. <laughs> um, maybe Sally Rags. Sally Rags. There you go. <laughs> Put up on the drapes, Alex. Um, my well, last question mm-hmm. is, uh, we see Vito carrying his little satchel. Yeah. What's in there? What's in the satchel? What's, what's in, in the satchel? satchel? Gotta find out, out what's, what's in the, the satchel. All right, everyone. That will wrap up the free version of Minute 8. And if you want to keep hearing us rap about GF2, head on over to godfatherminute.com slash support. And you'll get to, for just a buck a show, you get to hear us keep yapping on. We talk about all sorts of oddball things. I take a strangely pro-patriotic patriotic stance towards the end of the show. What else? What else? We, we learn more about? about the history of the ship, the Mashulu. And of course, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Uh-huh. And, and we also learn about what if Vito Corleone was welcomed at the port by none other than Ro- Ronnie Ciccio. Ron Ciccio. Who is Don Ciccio's brother. Merrick. It would be a nice ring theory with um, uh-huh. with uh, with uh, my Frankie Five Angels brother. That's right. So um, anyway, so. tune in for that. Go to godfatherminute.com slash support. Otherwise, we'll see you next week for another Godfather Minute. He's spelling it. <laughs>